Hi, welcome to another video. So, a new coding model has hit the town, and this time it's Yi Coder. If you don't know about Yi models, then let me tell you that they have been one of the major open source models. They have a good open source general use model that tops the leaderboards, which is really good, and was launched some time back. But now, they've launched their new model, Yi Coder. They say that Yi Coder is a series of open source code language models that deliver state of the art coding performance with fewer than 10 billion parameters. In this release, there are two coding specific models. The first is a relatively larger 9 billion parameter model, and the second is a much smaller one, 0.5 billion parameter model. So, that's really cool because both models can run on a simple computer, which is really cool. And the 1.5B model should be great for auto-completion and basic coding tasks, since it can run on any computer. Apart from this, it has a maximum context window of 128K tokens, enabling project-level code comprehension and generation. They also say that Yeecoder 9B outperforms other models with under 10 billion parameters, such as CodeQuen 1.57B and CodeGeeks 49B, and even achieves performance on par with DeepSeek Coder 33B. So, that's really cool. Now let's look at the benchmarks as well. First, they shared the live code benchmarks, and as you can see, in this benchmark, it's above all the models in its range, and it even beats DeepSeek Coder 33B, which is really cool, considering it's three times smaller than the DeepSeek model. Anyway, apart from that, there are also other benchmarks, including Human Evil, MBPP, and Kraruxival. In the Human Evil benchmark, the models don't show any out of this world response. In fact, they even score lower than CodeQuen, which is kind of not cool. But in MBPP and Cruxival, they take the crown by scoring above everyone, which is kind of cool. There's also the Cross Code Evil benchmark, where it also performs really well. In the Needle in a Haystack benchmark, it also performs really well, which is also cool. It's also good at reasoning and stuff, which is really cool. The model is also available on a llama for local usage if you want to try it out. So, that's basically it. But we also need to test it out and see if it really works like they say it does. So, let's get started and check it out. I'll be trying it out with these six coding questions to see if it's really good or not. So, let's get started. The first question is, create an HTML page with a button that explodes confetti when you click it. You can use CSS and JS as well. Let's send it and see. It's generating, and it's done. Here's the response from 1.5b and 9b. Let's preview the 1.5b model first. And, as you can see, this doesn't work at all. So, this one's a fail. Now, let's look at the 9b variant. And as you can see, this doesn't work either. So, this one's also a fail. Let's mark both of them. Now, the next question is, create a Python program that prints the next X leap years based on user input. Let's send it and see. Okay, here's the generation. Let's run this one and see. Okay, so it's working, but it doesn't ask for the input, which I explicitly asked for in the input prompt. But, Considering that it's so small, I'll give it a pass. Now let's run the second one. So, it asks for input. Let's give it that. And here's the result. It looks good as well. So, I'll give both of them a pass. Now the next question is, generate the SVG code for a butterfly. Let's send it and see. So, here are the generations. Let's preview the 1.5b1 first. And here's the preview. As you can see, this doesn't look like a butterfly. So, this one's a fail. Now, let's preview the 9B variant. And as you can see, this looks a bit like a butterfly. 
so, considering its size, I'll give this a pass. Now, the next question is, create a landing page for an AI company. The landing page should have four sections, header, banner, features, and contact us. Make sure the landing page looks sleek and modern. You can use HTML, CSS, JS. Let's send it and see as well. So, here are the generations. Let's preview them and see. Here's the 1.5B variant, and as you can see, this looks fine. Now, let's look at the 9B variant. Okay, here's the preview, and this doesn't look good. It doesn't have the features section, contact us, and it doesn't look good either. So, this one's a fail. Now, the next question is, write a game of life in Python that works in the terminal. Let's send it and see. Okay, so here's the generation. Let's run it now and see. As you can see, this doesn't work and gives an error. So, this one's a fail. Now, let's view the 9B variant as well. And this doesn't work either. So, this one's a fail too. Now, the next question is, write a to-do list app using HTML, CSS, JS, and put everything in one file. Let's send it and see. So, here's the generation. Now let's preview it and see. Here's the preview from 1.5b, and this just doesn't work. So, this one's a fail. Now let's look at the 7b model generation, and this doesn't work either. So, this one's also a fail. Now here's the final chart, and as you can see, the 1.5b model only passed two questions, and the 9b model also only passed two questions. So, I think the models are fine considering their size, but I think they could have been better. I think the 1.5B model is pretty good for its size and could be useful for auto-completion and similar tasks, while the 9B model is good but also limited. I'm not sure where the 9B model actually fits. I think it could be useful for small refactoring and tasks where the 1.5B model becomes limited. Both models have some good use cases. I especially like the 1.5B model. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the Super Thanks option below. Or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the Join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.